हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम यश वेलकम टू द राइजिंग एच दिस इज पार्ट सिक्स ऑफ स्टैटिक टाइमिंग एनालिसिस सो फार वी हैव स्टडीड ऑल द बेसिक्स ऑफ एस टी ए वॉट आर सेटअप एंड होल्ड टाइम्स वाई डू दे एग्जिस्ट हाउ टू डू सेटअप एनालिसिस हाउ टू कैलकुलेट द मैक्सिमम ऑपरेटिंग फ्रीक्वेंसी एंड हाउ टू डू द होल्ड एनालिसिस यू सर्टेनली डोंट वॉन्ट टू मिस आउट ऑन ऑल दीज इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक्स सो मेक श्योर दैट यू वॉच द कंप्लीट एस टी ए प्ले लिस्ट टू हैव अ वेरी क्लियर अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ एस टी ए इन दिस वीडियो वील सॉल्व एस टी ए प्रॉब्लम आज बिन द इंटरव्यूज एंड लर्न सम मोर टेक्निक्स टू इम्प्रूव द टाइमिंग ऑफ अ गिवन सर्किट सो लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड यू आर गिवन दिस पार्ट ऑफ अ सर्किट हैविंग अ लॉन्च फ्लॉप अ कैप्चर फ्लॉप एंड सम कॉम्बिनेशनल लॉजिक इन बिटवीन विच इज स्प्लिट अप इन टू टू कॉम्बिनेशनल लॉजिक्स ईच हैविंग अ डीले ऑफ एट नैनो सेकेंड्स द क्लॉक टू गिव डीले ऑफ फ्लिप फ्लॉप्स इज थ्री नैनो सेकेंड्स एंड द सेटअप टाइम ऑफ फ्लिप फ्लॉप्स इज वन नैनो सेकेंड फर्स्ट यू हैव टू कैलकुलेट द मिनिमम टाइम पीरियड एंड मैक्सिमम क्लॉक फ्रीक्वेंसी एट विच द गिवन सर्किट कैन ऑपरेट एंड सेकेंड वेदर यू कैन ऑपरेट द गिवन सर्किट एट सम फ्रीक्वेंसी हायर देन द मैक्सिमम फ्रीक्वेंसी यू हैव कैलकुलेटेड इफ येस देन वॉट मॉडिफिकेशन आर रिक्वायर्ड इन द डिजाइन देर आर सम एजम्पन्स एंड कंडीशन दैट यू हैव टू कीप इन माइंड यू कैन नॉट मॉडिफाई द क्लॉक पाथ दैट इज यू कॉन्ट एड एनी बफर्स देयर सेकेंड द सिग्नल गोइंग फ्रॉम सी एल वन टू सी एल टू इज अ सिंगल बिट सिग्नल एंड एनी अदर इनपुट्स टू दीज कॉम्बिनेशनल लॉजिक्स आर नॉन क्रिटिकल दैट इज दे विल टेक मिनिमल टाइम टू अफेक्ट द आउटपुट थर्ड वी आर कंसर्न ओनली विद द टाइमिंग एंड नॉट द एरिया एंड लास्ट डिले ऑफ एनी डिस्क्रीट कॉम्बिनेशनल एलिमेंट वुड बी वन नैनो सेकेंड द फर्स्ट पार्ट इज वेटी सिंपल एंड वी ऑलरेडी नो हाउ टू कैलकुलेट द मैक्सिमम क्लॉक फ्रीक्वेंसी यूजिंग द कंसेप्ट ऑफ डेटा अराइवल टाइम एंड डेटा रिक्वायर्ड टाइम If you don't remember that don't worry just check out this video and you will be good to go so let's calculate suppose this is the launch edge which reaches the launch flop at time t equals to 0 and this is the capture edge which reaches the capture flop at time t min which is the required minimum time period of the clock the data arrival time at the capture flop input is t clock to q plus tcl1 plus tcl2 that is 3 plus 8 plus 8 equals to 19 nanoseconds and the data required time is set up time before the capture edge reaches the capture flop that is t min minus t setup and for no setup violation the data must arrive before the required time hence the equation becomes 19 less than t min minus 1 and we get the minimum time period of the clock equals to 20 nanoseconds and the max clock frequency comes out to be 1 by 20 that is 50 megahertz now let us come to the second part of the question that is can we operate the circuit at a frequency higher than 50 megahertz the answer is yes we can but in order to do that we'll have to modify the circuit and we can do that in two different ways first is pipelining and second is combinational logic duplication let's see them one by one In pipelining what we'll do is we'll insert an extra flip flop in between the two combinational logics now our critical path is changed and in one clock cycle the data has to travel from the launch flop to this new flop for which let's denote the new minimum time period by t min 1 our new setup equation becomes t clock to q plus t cl 1 less than t min 1 minus t setup putting the values we get t min 1 equals to 12 nanoseconds and hence the maximum frequency has now become 1 by 12 equals to 83.33 megahertz which is greater than the previous value of 50 megahertz although we are able to increase the maximum operating frequency of the circuit but there is a small drawback also that comes along with this increased frequency and that is the increased latency at the final output of the capture flop if we operate both the circuits at the maximum frequencies that is at 50 megahertz for the original one and 83.33 megahertz for the new one in the original circuit we get the final output after one clock cycle and clock to q delay of the capture flop that is 23 nanoseconds and in the new circuit it takes two clock cycles each of 12 nanoseconds for the data to reach the capture flop 
and we get our final output after 12 plus 12 plus 3 that is 27 nanoseconds after the first rising edge. So the final output is a little bit delayed due to pipelining. Now let us see the second method, combinational logic duplication. Currently when CL1 computes its output, CL2 waits for 8 nanoseconds and after that it takes 8 more nanoseconds to produce its output making the total data arrival time equals to 19 nanoseconds. As we already know that the signal from CL1 to CL2 is only a single bit signal. It means there are only two possible inputs to CL2, either 0 or 1. So why should we wait for CL1 to get that value? Instead, if we duplicate the combinational logic too, like you can see here, and have both its possible outputs computed at the same time the CL1 is computing its output then we can save some time. Here what happens is when combinational logic 1 has done its computing for 8 nanoseconds both the CL2s have also completed their computing based on the prefixed inputs 0 and 1 and some other inputs from the non-critical paths. Hence both possible outputs of CL2 are already available and fed to this MUX. Now, Based on the CL1 output, which is connected to the select line of this MUX, the corresponding data will be transferred to the capture flop, which will now take only 1 nanosecond more and save 7 nanoseconds of time. So now, the data arrival time becomes 3 plus 8 plus 1 equals to 12 nanoseconds. Putting this in the equation, we get the new minimum time period equals to 13 nanoseconds, and hence, the new maximum clock frequency is 1 by 13 that is 76.9 MHz. Which means that now we can operate the system at up to 76.9 MHz that is greater than the original maximum value of 50 MHz. And in this method there is no drawback of latency like we saw in pipelining. The only trade off is the increased area. So this was today's video about a commonly asked interview question. I hope you understood the problem as well as the solution. In case you have any doubt or if you can think of any more solutions to this problem, please put them in the comments. It will be really helpful for others also. We will be solving some more interview problems in the upcoming videos. So make sure that you are subscribed to my channel and have the bell notifications turned on if you have not already. Also, if you have actually learned something today, hit that like button and please share it with your friends. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next Rising Edge.